You know, uh, one of your more memorable commercial films was uh, Saat Pake Bandha with Suchitra Sen. Uh -huh. Now, did that recognition that comes from a commercial acceptance uh -huh. in that film, did it sort of change your attitude towards... Uh, well, uh, to be more exact, this commercial acceptance came from my very second film which I did. That was not with... Uh, Mr. Ray, that was the Hungry Stone, the Tagore story, which was a super, super hit. And from that moment on, the third one also was with Ashit Shin's Shorolipi. All these were commercial successes. And probably that has um, given me this uh, lease of life. In, because if I was only successful with, with Mr. Ray's films, I wouldn't have existed as a star in this industry. But uh, that certainly did help. It uh, sort of uh, gave me confidence as an actor and uh, I also took it in another light that I thought that however badly I think of a commercial film, that gives me an opportunity to keep in practice, uh, practice of my craft, practice of all the and, and also the, give, gives me an opportunity to learn the tricks of my trade. So uh, that way, uh, it never really bothered me. In the, um, I told you that in the beginning, I had a few, I mean, working first with Mr. Ray uh, was not such a surprise for me. But then when I went to work with others, Mr. Ray uh, was really surprising for me because uh, they were so different and they were, I mean, that really upset me uh, at times. But as I told you, it's Mr. Ray who sort of gave me that most valuable uh, instruction to take it seriously also. You know, you talked about uh, the tricks of the trade. Hmm. Now, what are the tricks of the trade as an actor that you sort of, you employ? I mean, well, very, there are various things. For instance, um, taking pause in front of the camera. A, a novice or a newcomer. Uh, will certainly uh, try to deliver his lines as quickly as possible, take the minimum of pauses because he, he the tension he cannot uh, conquer with the tension that is generated in, in him while acting. But a really um, trained uh, Pakka professional will be relaxed at that time and use the pauses at his discretion and uh, very significantly too. This particular thing, uh, I must say, I, I learned by watching Chavi Vishwas, who was a master of this. And th there are so many things like that, which I would call tricks of the trade. Do you need, uh, as an actor, hmm. do you need a business or something to do uh, in order for you to sort of uh, deliver the line or feel comfortable in front of a camera because uh, no, I, I, I feel comfortable with any kind of situation, to be very frank. In fact, most actors are uncomfortable when they are asked to deliver lines doing business because they can't synchronize these two things. In fact, it is a little difficult thing. Uh, but it has always been uh, a pleasure for me uh, doing business and also delivering my lines and then also punctuating according to my uh, desire. Uh, where to um, stop um, speaking and do only business or where, where to do both the things or where to do only um, talking and not doing any business, stop the business and then resume the business again, that kind of a thing. That, well, uh, that gives an actor an opportunity to recreate life because life is like that. We, we speak, we do things at the same time. Another thing that many cinema actors are, um, find difficult in their early career is uh, making long speeches. That too was uh, not my uh, not my hurdle, because um, uh, coming from the theatre, I was used to uh, speaking long um, speeches at at a stretch. So uh, whenever uh, there is an opportunity like say in uh, Ghare Vaide, where the, uh, Shandip's first appearance, he delivers a long speech 
Uh, incidentally, when uh, Mr. Reg handed me over the copy of the script, he said that this speech I intend to take in one shot. So uh, I know you generally do not memorize, uh, but uh, you do it. And it always happened like that. There was one such um, big speech in Shonar Kerala where you speak about a full page of written lines. That uh, Mr. Ray wrote that very morning. That wasn't in the original script. And he, before the shot, he handed over it to me. And I said, oh, there's so many lines. He only said, oh, it's nothing for you. Come on, <laughs> go. Because I, I, I was groomed in the theater. So that was not but a difficulty. Do you believe in, in what many actors, of course, have made a kind of a fashion with them, in the West at least, in terms of what is called method acting? Have you ever sort of... No, I have never uh, really. But I, frankly speaking, I don't uh, really understand this method acting fully. I have read about it, all that, really. But uh, how does it differ from the Stanislavskian method? I really don't mm, <laughs> see. But have you studied acting in a, in a kind of a uh, philosophical, ideological approach that, yes, uh, I, I hone my craft by you know, taking in psychological tips or from what other masters have written about acting, other great Yeah, I have uh, been a student of such um, writings. I have read them and tried to understand them. And of course, um, I have benefited from them very uh, often. Uh, but, uh, you know, since we were not in a uh, uh, school of acting and there's no such formal education for us in acting. All this came uh, rather uh, spontaneously as and when available sort of a thing. But um, my first training with Shishir Kumar, a uh, little bit of training and, and the watching him in the rehearsal room and all that, uh, taught me most of the fundamentals of acting, probably. Fundamentals only. Uh, that Acting basically is nothing but a creating a whole uh, uh, kind of image, a complete image of a man uh, within that small uh, s scope of the film. It, this idea came to me in, in uh, my theatre days when I worked with Mr. Bhaduri. And then, of course, uh, books like Pudovkin's film acting or Stanislavski before that, they mm, sort of augmented and uh, nourished this even further. You know, in one of, I think, the last films you did with Mr. Ray, Shaka Prashaka, uh -huh. you played a role of a mentally retarded sort of a thing. Uh -huh. Now, was that easier to do than to play a normal person? I mean, uh, no, it wasn't. Because, you know, uh, I'll tell you what happened during this. When uh, he um, decided to make this film, uh, he told me that, uh, look, I'm going to um, make a film of that script which I wrote for your magazine 25 years back. I'm going to update it and rewrite it and I'm going to make a film out of it. And uh, there is uh, this role of a... Um, brother of the, of the three brothers, which has very few spoken words uh, for him, maybe 20 or 25 lines. But I want someone mm, very dependable, so I want you to play that role. I was overjoyed <laughs> to get that role and uh, then when our work progressed, he said that, uh, look here, Shomutu, these very words. Uh, I have given you enough uh, independence during your whole career to think and play your role as you like. But in this particular film, I'm afraid we will have to work together. Because in a person who is mentally uh, deranged or who hasn't got a mental equilibrium, the behavior pattern can mm, be of infinite variety. 
So we'll have to select only those which are significant for this script and this particular story. And so there, uh, I believe, uh, your um, and mine um, observations should coincide and tally with each other. So um, then he started, for example, later on, he said some, some other day that uh, it is a scene observed generally uh, that in a person of such um, um, mental illness, um, they have developed a kind of a um, physical mannerism. Most of them have. I said, yes, I have observed that too. Uh, and he said then that I wish that you play with your hand. Uh, I said, what kind of play you want it? He said, he, this character thumbs, uh, I mean, thumbs on the table or on his head or on the sofa seat where he's, he constantly does like that. And uh, that appealed to me very much. Later on in that particular scene when he sort of, during the eating scene, when he's very, becomes very disturbed and keeps on thumping on the table, uh, I, along with that, I added another physical uh, thing that, uh, kind of ticking the neck and neck muscles and because that that came from my observation but the basic thing was his that's how two of us kind of uh, collaborated you know you have this great love for theater and you mm. keep going back to theater from cinema all the time even mm. to this day what is it about theater that is so gratifying that that makes it makes you want to go back to well, the first thing is it's my first love. That's, uh, I can't forget the theatre. Couldn't even, when I was so busy with the films that I couldn't go to the theatre, I, I used to long to be on stage. And then in order not to forget uh, the uh, technique, I used to take uh, part in uh, sort of uh, shows that we staged for the um, Actors Guild, uh, Ovinitri Shongo. And uh, in 1978, when I thought that I can't re remain uh, outside the theatre anymore, I took a plunge and um, at that time I was so busy, even now I am busy with the film, but that was making a break because no one wanted um, me to go to the theatre at that time. Particularly the industry people, they thought that it's, uh, I, I will not be able to give them proper time. Just a moment. And, uh, is it rolling? Yeah. Uh, another desire um, must be to be on the stage is that uh, there uh, I write the script, I make adaptation myself and then I direct the play and that's the most complete job that I can imagine of. Uh, that gives me a lot of satisfaction and at least a lot of enthusiasm <laughs> and um, well you may say that why don't you direct a film the question comes obviously you know uh, the film directing a film means uh, about um, a whole time activity for six to eight months at least and my commitments with the Bengali film industry does not allow me that time to, I mean, to keep away from uh, other acting assignments uh, or uh, even the practical reality of not earning any other money from other films uh, for about most of the year is uh, rather difficult. And then also the, another difficulty is there that the kind of film I would like to make is very difficult to find backers here in, in Calcutta. Even um, think of a um, great artist like Shotu Yitrai. He uh, did not find a private backer for the last few films of his. Three of them, to at least I can remember, all of them are either NFDC or the government or something like that. So that discourages me a lot. And uh, but for the theatre, the sheer fact of um, uh, Myself being in the cast also, I can use my star value and 
create my kind of theater at, at my will. And that's what I am doing. I mean, uh, in the professional theater world, for the last 15 years, I'm a big exception. I mean, I'm doing, uh, these kind of plays are being done in the group theater level. But I don't believe in group theater. I believe that a theater should uh, try and attract the majority of audience. And uh, it's fact uh, remains that the majority of our audience goes to the public theater to see, watch plays. So the, it is that place where I have, I have to do good plays. Is that why you also do jatras? Uh, no, no. To be honest, uh, these uh, jatra or the semi jatras that I'm doing, the, it's entirely for money, plain and simple, because they pay you uh, very handsomely. And uh, say, doing uh, ten or fifteen or twenty such appearances uh, during the winter. Um, well, gives me enough to <laughs> carry on through the year. But um, you also write poetry. You yeah. pu published and edited a literary magazine. Now, what is it? How do you manage to sort of uh, have so many interests and yet keep yourself fresh for each one of them? Well, I don't know. I, this has been, sometimes this has been a struggle because, you know, you are always short of time. Uh, but if you love something very deeply, even if you don't find time to pursue it uh, for the whole time, uh, it, it lingers in your mind, it remains. I have, mm, I have no fixed time for writing poetry, very frankly speaking. And in the beginning, maybe that uh, I was being uh, haunted by a line and was wanting to write the line, but I was engrossed in some shooting process where the atmosphere is totally different and you can't just concentrate on writing poetry there. It, and eventually I forgot the line. Then I evolved a method. I, whenever a line comes, I, I carry a, a kind of a notebook with me, my famous red book. <laughs> so um, I carry it. If a line comes, I just put those two words or three words or a sentence and I keep it pending. And uh, my mind also has uh, develop that kind of a habit that when I am alone maybe at night uh, I'm going to relax for half an hour or an hour I go back to this notebook bring out those lines and watching at them farther uh, lines start coming and that's how I keep on writing most of the time and maybe that uh, well there is a gap of uh, about an hour or so in between two shots they have preparing this set or something and I want to write something, some idea flashes through my mind. Well, then I write down the whole thing. That's why I kept on writing. And I've been, uh, for the uh, play scripts that I have adapted for my theater, uh, they were, I mean, they were more difficult to write in the sense that in, uh, in a busy film actor's life, there are hardly any opportunity to sit down for hours together and go on writing. So in previously what I used to do, even today, sometimes I do it to, be, to begin with, but then I come back to the city. I, I take a French leave. I go away from the town or maybe I declare that I'm not there and go to some friend or relation's house, lock myself up there and keep on writing for two, three days. And when I have started, when this, it flows, then it becomes simpler. Then I can come back and do it between my works. Uh, even um, maybe during the shooting when I'm waiting for the next shot, I can write at least. And I have um, sort of accepted the fact that I will have to work in that way. Otherwise, uh, I will not be able to work at all. Any particular role that you wish you want to do or you, know, you wish somebody would make a film that, you know, and you want to act in it? There yeah, there are so many of them, so many of them, yes, but for some of them, I've become too old. For instance, uh, I had a dream to play Hamlet, <laughs> it never, uh, opportunity never appeared. So um, every actor has such dreams and there are now, of course, some much more earthy uh, dreams for me, like s some novels that I have read recently, which um, brings out uh, the uh, reality of our time, of our 
situation. There are one or two such um, novels where there are beautiful roles which suits my age and my uh, temperament and my endowments. And I would like to do such one or two such roles. To be more precise, I would like to do such roles which would be able to, through which I would be able to reflect my time and my reality. You know, one of the such roles you did was, I think, in Ganeshatru. Yes. Dr. Ashok Mitra. Certainly. Very relevant to uh, our times. Uh, very relevant to our times. And um, uh, recently I did one or two roles with Tapan Sina, uh, like, say, Wheelchair or Atanko. This particular, they are so relevant, so, I mean, uh, it's, it, it reflects our situation so nicely. Uh, I was very happy to be in those films. How important is a director to bring out a performance for an actor? In, in I think it's very important. It, it is, you know, uh, for a newcomer, it is essential that a director creates an atmosphere of friendliness uh, and, you know, he, whoever, he, coming from the stage or maybe fresh, uh, right in, uh, an actor, a fresh uh, newcomer walks into the film set, whatever is the situation, an actor finds it very difficult to um, create that complete image of a man that I was talking in front of so many machines and so many tools and lights and uh, he almost feels uh, the atmosphere is hostile. So it is the director who, uh, whose responsibility is to create that um, repose in the mind of the actor, to give him the confidence that these, these things are not hostile. They are only being helpful in your bringing out your talent. I mean, it, it is the director um, who can do this to the actor. And later on, when these things go away from the mind of the actor, even there, a director can sort of, by being an appreciator of the actor, can inspire the actor to give more uh, meaningful performances, more rich in 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 in, it, in its um, tone and its texture. That that they, they are also the director. For instance, Tapun Sina. Tapun Sina is is in, in himself an admirer of acting. He he loves acting as a as a discipline. So he encourages his actors to perform as best as they can. It's a pleasure working with directors like Tapun Sina, Shoktujit Rai, even Miranda. Miranda does not, may, may not instruct the actor if necessary, uh, or um, the, um, in the technical way, like um, say Tapun Da or Manik Da would do. But Miranda uh, explains the scene in such a beautiful way that you feel encouraged to perform. How would you like to be remembered? I don't know, someone who, someone who loved good things in life, someone who loved goodness in human beings. But as an actor, uh, you would you like to be remembered for what you did uh, in your serious films or in your commercial films or in your body of work, because here is a man in yeah. many parts. I, I would like to be remembered for my whole body of work, because I don't think it's one film that I've been acting in. It's a continuous process. It's, it's, it's like a river flowing on and on and on. And I would only wish that I remain creative as long as I live. Thank you.